Hello, folks. I've had more chances to play with my new wide field telescope, and I'm just going to show you a few comparisons I've done so far. And I was out last night capturing the Heart Nebula with it. Uh, the seeing conditions weren't very good, so I didn't capture a lot of data. But this is what the heart looks like with it, and it almost fit inside a single frame. In fact, it would have fit even better if I had rotated this part down to the lower right. So I was pretty pleased with how that came out. And this is in comparison to my Newtonian telescope, which is 6-inch, 750 focal length on the right. And I much prefer how the one on the left looks. Now, if you, if you prefer higher magnification, then obviously this is the way to go. And, and doing mosaics is also an option if you have enough clear skies to get that done. But I would say in, in this comparison, the, the wide-angle telescope is, is the clear winner. Now, let, let's look at the, the next one. Now, after I captured the heart, Nebula last night, I pointed my telescope at the Whirlpool Galaxy, and that really surprised me. I mean, I knew it would be small, but I didn't know it would be that small. <laughs> wow! And I I didn't plan on using my wide-angle telescope during galaxy season, and this just puts it to rest. There's no doubt in my mind I'm going to want to use something bigger, and this is compared to the one on the right. Uh, this is from uh, another rough image from my SCT telescope, which had a focal reducer at the time. For, so it was 8 inches with a focal length of around 1260. Okay. I went back to this galaxy and did a little processing on it. And it, it's not a total loss if you do try and capture uh, galaxies with a wide field telescope. Because you can still zoom in and, and pick off some detail if you had enough data. This only has 27 minutes of information, so it, it doesn't look very good. But So it's, it's not a total waste. You can crop it and still make it look halfway decent. Now, uh, this is the Crab Nebula. It has nothing to do with wide angle. I just wanted to show you a fix I managed to make uh, to the image on the left. This is the one on the left that I actually posted in my video of the Crab Nebula, and I only managed 30 minutes of data that night because the winds were so bad. And the one on the right, I was able to revisit the data and I managed to salvage up to 81 minutes of data. And I, I think it, it came out much better because the one on the, the left only used HA and oxygen, whereas the one on the right uh, uses an equal amount of sulfur with that HA and oxygen. And I think the colors just look up. Uh, a little more natural on here. There's you got some mostly orange, and here you got orange and pink. I, think it, I just think it looked better. Okay, this is the Orion Nebula again, and I had a chance to rework some of this data. The one on the left is what I posted in the video a few nights ago, and the one on the right, after reworking some data, you can see Running Man definitely looks a lot better than the one on the left. And the core in the Orion Nebula on the right looks a little softer than the, the one on the, the left. So I think it, it, it's a big improvement over last time. And what I did, mainly, the difference is that I ran a background extraction with the one on the right. I kind of skipped that step with the one on the left. I didn't think it needed it, but obviously it did. So note to self, don't skip steps. It's not worth it. Okay, talk to you later.